And God's been impressing this on my spirit the last couple of weeks. And I know it, I know that sometimes we get wound up pretty tight, but sometimes you just need to slow down a little bit and hear a word from God. Amen? Yeah. I don't think we all got it all together and we're all you know, on our way and everything's hunky-dory and everything. Sometimes you get down. Yeah. Sometimes you wander off. Sometimes you mess up. Somebody better be saying amen to me. Yeah. Sometimes you go the wrong, make the wrong decision. Yeah. Don't quit. Don't walk away. Don't leave. Don't get outside where God can't help you. Now, God can go anywhere that He wants to. Yeah. And He can do anything that He wants to. Yeah. Except for make you do something against your own will. Yes. Now, I'm going to try to stay cool and calm this morning because I think this sermon needs to be heard. Yes. Not so much felt. Because we got people sometimes that says, the world has beaten them down. And they don't know that they can come back. But sometimes we get out there and think, well, we can't come home. We've messed it up. We've made too many mistakes. Nobody will have us. Nobody wants us. And, and it's just over. It is never over until your dying day. Amen. As long as you have breath in your body, as long as you have a mind that will say, I am sorry, God, for what you've done, what I've done to you. There is a chance and you have an opportunity. Yes. And I would like somewhere, everybody wouldn't kick me. Everybody wouldn't be done with me. Everybody wouldn't right. say that that's, that's it. No more. I've had enough. I'd like to know that if, if it came down to it, that somebody would say, you know what? He's human. He's messed up. He's failed, and we know he's failed. It's been put on the front page of everything. Everybody knows it, but I don't care about that. i got the love of Jesus Christ in my life, and I don't care what anybody says about somebody. It ain't, I'm not God, and they didn't sin against me. They didn't fail me. They failed God, and I'm a brother. I'm a family member. I'm a dad, and you are welcome in this place as long as you have breath in your body and you want to come back. I say get in your car and get out here each and every Sunday and watch God do what God does. The church world has gotten into a place where you can't even breathe right. Amen. If you make a mistake, you're done. It's over. Don't ever God operate. I know a God of a second chance. And I know a God of a third chance. And I know a God that will say, if you say you're sorry, I am willing and just and faithful to forgive you of that. And I don't know about anybody else, but I feel like there needs to be some forgiveness, first of all, for one another, and second of all, for yourself. Amen. Act like we ain't sinned. Act like we ain't failed. Act like we ain't messed it up. Let me tell you something. I was just as lost as you was when you found Jesus. I was on my way to hell, and God reached way down below the bottom. If this was the bottom, I was below it. And he reached out and pulled me up, and he established my feet, and put me on a solid, firm foundation, established my goings, and forgave me. And when I got up and I looked at myself, Brother Steve, I forgave myself. Somebody needs to forgive yourself. You can't change all the time what happened yesterday. All you can say is, I'm sorry, Lord. God wants to forgive me and His anger is always yes. And amen. What if you were the one? Some people like their grudges. Some people like their attitudes. But I've come to tell this church that that ain't going to happen here. God forgave us, we're going to forgive Him. And you're going to be welcome right back to the table. It ain't going to be like you lost nothing. When God restores you back to the family, you're a daughter. He doesn't bring you back to the servant. He doesn't bring you back to the higher end. He brings you back to the son. And He says, welcome home. If you got a place, and don't you worry, that means something to me. Because there was a day that I was the one. And not the day that I got saved either. But there was a day where I messed up. Yes. And all I had to do, Sister Charlotte, is go right back down yes. and say, yes. God, because God already knows.
knows. Yeah. Look, you ain't you ain't fooling God. No. You ain't tricked God. You ain't got one over on God just because you fooled us and you got one over on us. You did not fool God. I went back to the place where I started from, at the foot of the cross. And I asked God to forgive me. Doth he not leave the ninety-nine 
and go into the mountains and seek them. Now, I love everybody in here. If you don't come, and you keep not coming, I'm coming. Amen. I'm going to try calling first, Brother Steve. And if you scream me, I'm ugly at the door at 3 o'clock in the morning. I want everybody in this place to know that this shepherd of this house loves them. I'm going to call you. I'm going to text you. I'm going to do all I can to keep you encouraged. Because I don't want to go looking for you in the mountains. When I go for you, I want to see you sitting right there. Yeah. I want to see you in the house of God each and every Sunday. Because I can't feed you when you're out there like I can feed you right in here. If you get out there, you're in danger all by yourself. You don't have somebody to say, hey, don't do that. This will kill you. You need to stop. You're going to hurt your own self. I'm not looking out for me, but I'm looking out for you. I need you here so I can feed the spirit so when you go out there and the wild you got some stamina and you can make it. I can't take care of you like I can if you come to the house of God. Somebody break down in here. <laughs> One person, Brother Charles, always says is worth the world. Yeah. If God is willing to leave 99 and come after you. Yeah. So this is talking to somebody today. I don't even care. The Holy Spirit is working. And come looking just for little old you and make sure that you're right and you're doing right. That's the kind of God that I'm talking about this morning. That's the kind of God that I want to serve. The one that says everybody else is okay. Everybody else is going to be just fine. But let me go see about Sister Shirley and see what's wrong with her. He'll go to the mountains. Yes. Not only that, David said, if I made my bed in heaven, yeah, he said, if I ascended by the wings to the heights of the heavens, you are there too. Yeah. The kind of God I serve is when you get off somewhere and you think that you messed it up and you feel like, man, I'm going to go do this and God says, no, you ain't. He'll grab you by the shirt collar, Brother Tim, and he'll say, it ain't good for you. There's reasons why your car wouldn't start. There's reasons why you couldn't go where you wanted to. It's because God said, no, I have a better plan for you. Amen. He'll go to the top of the world for one. Yeah. Now, my question is, why are the 99 standing around when one of our brothers or one of our sisters is in danger, we ain't safe, Sister Charlotte, just because there's 99 of us. We're still only sheep, and sheep's only defense is to turn their backside to the wall. That ain't no defense at all. We don't have quills. We don't have teeth. We don't have fangs. We don't have defense. Except for there's 99 of us, and the wolf can kill every one of us. Well, I say when God moves, and when God goes, the rest of us get out of our chair and go to somebody bring back for that one. If the one is important to God, it better be important to God's people, because if the shepherd brings back the one, you're in danger too. Amen. Yeah. Amen, somebody. Just because there's a bunch of us that will make it right. If that one's out, we all ought to be trouble. Yes. When I do weddings, I say, when you're married and you have joy, the joy is double. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But when you have troubles or sorrow, it's cut in half. Because yeah. you're not carrying it by yourself. Yeah. But when you have joy, it's double. How can we as people that call ourselves people of God, know that there are people in our lives and in our area that we meet each and every day, standing here and think we got it all right when we know that some of our friends and some of our families, if they died today, would not go to heaven. Amen. You better start following the shepherd. Amen. 
If it's the shepherd in you, Brother Steve, you better walk. Amen. If there's 98, who cares? Let them stay. I remember the story of Peter and how they must have laughed at him, Sister Regina, when he said, if it's you, God, bid me to come. And they're thinking, well, he's a dummy. But they stayed in the boat, and Peter walked on the water. So I say he may have sank, but there was a time that he was walking on water talk to somebody, that's the leading and the inspiration of the Holy Ghost, and it's time for the people of God to get up out of their seat and go talk to somebody. You have life-giving word, the belly that, that there's water that flows out of your belly that will never let you thirst again. It's time for somebody to say, I'm going to go out into that world, and I'm going to find somebody, and maybe it's not your own son. Maybe you tell somebody else to talk about God, and God sends somebody to tell your son, and everybody gets saved. You God's got a plan and his plan is perfect. And when it's all said and done, we are. And if it be so, if it so be that he find it, verily I say unto you, he rejoices more of that sheep than the ninety-nine which went not astray. You want to make God happy today? Yeah. You want to do yourself a favor today? Yeah. Quit running. Come back down out of the mountains. Put it lots. Come back where the shepherd can actually shepherd you. Yeah. Come back to a place where you can actually be useful. Yeah. I know the world says you've messed it up and you've gone too far. That ain't what God said. No. God said, I'll restore to you the years that the caper worm destroyed. I'll give you double, just like the pastor preached last week, double for your trouble, Joe. And, and Peter, I told you this morning that God has no respect for the person. And if he did it for him, he'll do it for you. Amen. If you want something from God, you just got to come back to where God is. Amen. God will sit right on his throne. He's coming. He ain't like no other king. He ain't like no other servant. He ain't like no other shepherd. He'll be up off his throne, and he'll run to meet you. And he'll you. Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. We went so far that we think that's it. I don't care what nobody says. That ain't what the scripture's saying today. God's in the mountains looking for you. Amen, somebody. And the rest of us, whether we come or we don't, we're waiting for you to come back because we're about to have a party on this place. The Bible says that there's rejoicing in the presence of God over one
care yeah. about the one. Yeah. I think it's time that we put our, our feelings and our attitude yeah. and our grudges and everything like that behind us yeah. and really get about the Father's business. Yeah. Because if Jesus came back today, there's some people sitting in this building right now yeah. that would not go to heaven. And I've made up my mind if God gives me the opportunity as a brother, I'm going to pray to the
tired of hearing about the sermons of 20 years ago. I'm tired of hearing about the revivals of 30 years ago. I'm tired of hearing about how grandma used to do it. I want to hear how redemption on Black Lake Road in Auburn, Michigan stood up for the nation and the country. And we started watching the same of the unsaved people walk into this building and give their life to Jesus Christ. That's what I'm talking about. Somebody just go ahead and call it.
want somebody to step out of their eyes.